I became uh, really motivated to be a uh, ear doctor when I was quite young, actually, when I was in kindergarten, my primary school asked us what we wanted to do and I said I wanted to fix ears. And then later on, I know how difficult was my deaf father in a pharmacy. He'd ask his customers what they wanted and uh, couldn't hear them and ask them to speak up. And uh, if they had confidential items, the whole town would know what they were up to and uh, that embarrassed me. I got interested in working in hearing loss because I was, I thought, close to finishing my PhD uh, in communication systems, data transmission on telephone lines, and I heard from another academic in the department, David Dewhurst, that Graham Clark was looking for someone to work in the engineering side uh, of his bionic ear. My job search wasn't going well and I thought I should at least have an interview with Graham and find out what it was all about and things went from there. Jim clearly showed that he had lateral thinking and I knew that he was going to be the right person. As I recall, the question I asked him was, do you think it'll work? And he said, I don't know. But then he added, but if it does, you might have a job. <laughs> now, as far as the team was concerned, I think one of the things I enjoy was that we were all young, we all worked together, and we were all committed, and that was a real uh, great feeling. The challenges that we faced um, were different uh, for each member, uh, I think. My challenges were to help keep the team together, to fund the team, and funding was not easy at all because I knew if we didn't have any money, we didn't have a team. And uh, at first I had to uh, go to speak at Lions and uh, Rotary Lunches, got a few hundred dollars here and there, and I could see it was going to take a lot of money and a lot of luncheons to make the uh, device. We hope to be doing research into three areas. Firstly, methods of the early diagnosis of deafness, uh, we hope to record brain waves from young children to see whether they are deaf or they are mentally retarded or have autism. We hope to do research into areas where we can aim to bring deaf children into the normal world of communication. We hope to improve on methods of teaching these children to speak. And thirdly, we hope to do research into methods to produce hearing artificially in stone deaf children. This uh, means stimulating their auditory system electrically. Part of the job we had to do was be with, work with a television station, which meant going down to the streets of Melbourne and shaking a tin asking people for a donation. And I had a lovely uh, PA, Joan Ma, and we had a competition to see who could raise the most money. Joan would stand outside the very leading uh, st store um, and I would stand in the uh, main street where elderly ladies came back from Myers. I won hands down. It was an interesting uh, insight into human uh, uh, generosity. But I think it's worth adding in that of course the reason for needing to have this form of fundraising was because there was no way the conventional sources of research funds would fund this research because it was just seen to be too risky. Unfortunately, the scientists of the day didn't uh, believe that it would work. Uh, leading people had written and uh, that influenced uh, people. And worse still, for me, from my angle, uh, I was called all sorts of things. Uh, Clown Clark, um, it was so unlikely to be successful. As far as developing this work and doing this research, I was told so many times that it wouldn't work, that the others in the United States and elsewhere had shown that it wouldn't and said that it wouldn't, and uh, I was really wasting money that could be well spent on teaching. I feel it's rather ironical that having been abused regularly for making a press statement uh, that there might be 
5,000 people in Australia with a profound loss that could benefit. But here we are now, half a million people have had the cochlear device. It was quite prophetic in a way, but uh, very hard at the time. It was difficult to find any patients, and that was very embarrassing to have gone to the press and said, here's a device that might help thousands, and I couldn't even get one or two patients. What do you expect from this operation? Well, I would like to be able to hear something again. It's a nightmare being deaf. If it helps with speech so I can hear it again, I'll be very grateful. Uh, when we did operate, uh, trying to be careful, and Rod recovered well, um, then the next challenge by the end of the year, because the money was running out, was to see if we could get speech understanding. And I worked with my colleague Joe Tong and Bruce Miller and Jim and others, and we developed a speech code that we tried out in 1978, before the deadline, before Christmas, and it worked. And I was so moved, I went into the next door lab and I burst into tears of joy. As an Australian male, that's not something that you do, but I did it and, and I didn't tell anyone. And that was, for me, a very critical moment. I'm actually amazed and uh, delighted that uh, Cockley has done such a fantastic job working with us, uh, but uh, making a device that, that we can all be proud of. And uh, it's got still further to go. And after all, we must realise it's the only successful sensory neural interface that's now currently available. One of the challenges too was to help deaf children, which people weren't sure was possible and there was a lot of concern. When Cochlear made the device suitable for deaf children and we got children developing near normal spoken language, that was fantastic. I've had numerous letters, numerous contact with people, particularly mothers and children who've benefited. I've, it brings me tears, to, even now. I feel so moved. I would say to cochlear staff that the, the cochlear implant is a real life changer and it's, it's such a wonderful place to be able to make a contribution. You should be very proud of what you're doing. Never, never give up. Uh, but be prepared to sacrifice a lot for your goal because uh, things that have been tried that are worthwhile aren't always easy to solve. You're part of a team. We all value what you're doing and every person is making a real difference and uh, keep it up.